Live from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Veeam On 2018 in Chicago, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Carl Rottenstrock is here. Carl Rottenstrock is senior program manager for Azure Storage at Microsoft. Carl, thanks for coming on. Hey, it's a pleasure, guys. Thank you, you for a, having me. You got a beautiful me. picture of your family. You got three, three boys at three home? Boys, right? Three right. boys, three boys. They know, keep I, me out of trouble. They I, get into it, they keep me out of it. I'm <laughs> one of three boys. My, my mom, you know, kept this going. You must have a, a, a strong woman at she home. She is a saint. <laughs> so, at any rate, thanks for coming on. We love talking Microsoft, Azure, Cloud and storage, let's start with your role. Sure, what do you, yeah. What do you do at Microsoft? Absolutely, so the, for the last year I've been a, a program manager with the storage team and I have kind of a unique role. You know, usually you see store, uh, program managers who focus on features, right? You are championing a, a new feature in, mm -hmm. in your service, your platform. Uh, for me, I get to work with our partner ecosystem. So I spend a lot of time with our great partners like Veeam and our channel partners like SHI, CDW, SoftChoice, uh, Insight, I mean just, I'll, I'll tell you, I've got the best uh, best job in the business. I, I can't complain. I get to work with great, smart people every day. So it's, is your role sort of transferring knowledge to those partners, assisting those partners, acting as a catalyst, uh, gathering information from them, and uh, you, feeding it back to the product teams? Yeah, really, you know, all of the above, um, helping to make sure that we've got a, a combined solution, an end-to-end -end solution that's the best thing for our customers. So everything from upfront assessment, through implementation, through health check afterwards. You know, our goal is to have the happiest customers in the public cloud, and we can't do that without our partners. How do you, how should we think about your, uh, the Azure storage portfolio? Can you paint a picture for us? Oh boy, it, uh, it has grown drastically, I mean, just in the last couple of months. So not only do we have our, our first party offerings in the, the, the disk, so a, 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 a traditional VM disk is, you know, we all know what you're going to attach to a server. Uh, we have hosted file infrastructures where we provide file shares that don't require a server to manage. Our partnership with NetApp, uh, where we are, are going to be operating NetApp uh, systems in our data centers and offering their native services. And, uh, and we just continue to expand with big data solutions, with uh, Avere, our new uh, acquisition that is, is really aimed at high performance compute environments like we see in genomics and, uh, and media and entertainment. Uh, it's just a portfolio that continues to grow and we all joke that storage is boring, right? Nobody cares about storage, but you know, honestly, it's one of the, the most interesting and fastest growing and evolving platforms in Azure. Yeah. We joke, we joke, sometimes we call it snorage, but yeah. hey, Stu and I are kind of boring <laughs> people, so we, we love talking about it. I like so, that. So you got file, you got object, you got block, you got big data solutions, you got, you got high performance Absolutely. file solutions. Okay, like you say, this expanding portfolio. Yeah, Carl, I just, you know, I, I look back at my career and Microsoft's had a long, you know, partnership, not only with the compute side, but really on the storage side, maybe isn't as well known as, yeah. you know, shipping on every PCM server, you know, out there. A lot has changed, you know, when you talk about Azure and Azure Stack Absolutely. Uh, coming out. Maybe explain a little bit, I believe you called it kind of the first party versus sure. the second party, how that, you know, Microsoft does it versus Microsoft partners, how, how those mesh together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, I'll tell you, I, so I joined the company about five years ago and uh, I've been on the storage team for the last year. I was a field specialist, a subject matter expert before that, working you know, very, very closely with customers. And what I love that I've seen over this period through the Satya Nadella era is just this open Microsoft that says, uh, you know, we don't have to do everything, right? We don't have to try to um, provide everything to the customer. We're, we're really uh, believe in, and I think we, we just diffuse that best of breed uh, attitude you know, going forward. And our partners feel that. You know, whether we're, we're working with Veeam uh, in Azure Public Cloud as, as a target or them offering protection of, of VMs in public cloud, which is necessary, by the way. I think that's a huge fallacy in the industry that you place your app, you place your machine in a public cloud and it's magically protected by pixies. Uh, you know, pa it's not. Backup and security aren't a concern wherever you put it, right? Absolutely, <laughs> wherever they are. So we rely on our partners like Veeam to provide that. And really where Azure Stack comes in is providing that consistent experience, not just to our customers, but also to our partners. So Veeam is able to protect 
Azure public uh, assets in the same manner they're able to protect Azure private, let's you know, for Azure Stack resources. Um, so, you know, really it's just offering customers choice to use best of breed solutions and allowing our partners to have an easy means to support both on-premises and public cloud. So it's like a service catalog that you guys offer and then you advise customers or they pick and choose what they want? How does that all work? Yeah, so really what we do, and that's, that's a great way to put it, so we have what we call uh, the Azure Marketplace that's present in, uh, in the Azure public cloud and we extend that to Azure Stack. So if I'm a customer who wants to deploy a Veeam per se in, in either infrastructure, I go to this catalog of, of apps. I mean, it literally is a catalog of apps. Search for Veeam, there it is, and I can single click deploy in, uh, in either Azure Stack or Azure Public. Microsoft is unique in the sense of, of, its, of its hybrid strategy in terms of yeah. what you have in the cloud, you have on-prem, you're trying to, wherever possible, make it identical. Absolutely. I mean, I think really Microsoft and Oracle are really the only two companies who sort of had a, have a stated strategy to do that. Yep. Let's talk about Microsoft in terms of where you're at, in terms of getting that substantially similar capability in, in, in basically on-prem and in the public cloud. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, and that's a great, great topic to discuss. So Azure Stack, I always like to tell folks, hey, full disclosure, and we, you know, we don't try to hide this at all, that's not who we are, but it, it will always lag a little bit behind Azure Public. You know, when you think about the controls in customers' data centers for rolling out code updates and, and new versions of uh, software, new capabilities, there's always an adoption curve, right? You have folks who are um, a little more hesitant to, to release uh, quickly and adopt quickly. So, Azure Stack offers them the capability to defer some of those updates uh, for a period of time. So there will be uh, lag. Uh, we have to qualify for multiple vendor platforms. You know, we've chosen to go to market in a hyper-converged model with our partners like Dell EMC, HPE, Lenovo, and Cisco. Uh, whereas Azure Public, that's a completely controlled infrastructure and uh, we're able to deploy very quickly, and we do. We're constantly iterating and, and releasing new features. So I think that's the biggest difference between the two. Mm -hmm. All right, so Carl, you give a session uh, here at the show called sure Migrating did. to Azure. That whole move is pretty challenging. Oh, you know, yes. Am I lift and shifting? Am I transforming? Am I building new? What are you hearing from customers? And give our audience a taste of uh, some of the kind of key takeaways that you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one of the biggest concerns that we've had over the last couple of years. As I said earlier, we want the happiest customers in public cloud and no cloud regret or remorse, right? So uh, what we talked about in our session was a tool that we released uh, recently called Azure Migrate that is all about assessing and setting expectations for customers around what can and cannot migrate, how much it will cost to run that infrastructure in public cloud, either as is or optimized, and then suggestions for optimizing their infrastructure to get the best bang for their buck. So there are great opportunities to save cost when uh, platforms are adopted like Azure SQL, platform as a service offerings. You know, when I've got kind of that time-sharing concept, when I take away maintenance activities around operating systems and uh, software releases, there are significant cost savings versus a lift and shift, which can you know, quite honestly be more expensive than what that customer is doing on-premises today. So Azure Migrate is meant to help customers avoid that. No yeah, regrets. I, I, I guess there's I wonder what you're hearing from customers, because there's some concern, well maybe I should just do infrastructure as a service. Because yeah. if I get into those platforms as a service, am I, am I locked in? I mean, Microsoft yeah. used for lots of business critical applications. I see Microsoft strongly in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Oh my God. Uh, getting into the functions as a service, which those things are, are trying to give me a little bit more portability and flexibility, so maybe discuss some of those. Yeah, things. that's great, and I'm glad yeah. you brought that back around. So there is, there's always that concern about the Cloud Hotel California, right? That's what I, I like to jokingly refer half chokingly refer to it as, uh, you get in, you can never leave. Uh, and and there, there is that, that jeopardy with any, any provider that if you're using some proprietary platform that you, you, know, you can be locked in. And really we try to promote uh, the use of containers extensively with those customers who have that concern. And even with our, our hosted um, analytics and hosted database infrastructures, we make sure to provide those portable um, cross-cloud platforms like Postgres, uh, MySQL, our analytics is all Hadoop-based. Uh, you know, really, we, we, we don't want that 
lock-in to be there. We don't want that to be a concern. So continuing support for open platforms and ecosystems is really something we're committed to. I mean, lock-in, you know, this lock-in, openness, choice, it's a, it's a spectrum. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've been in this business for a long time, and, and Unix used oh. to be the open system, right? I mean, and today, you can't get more locked in than no. if you're on a, a, you know, a Unix platform. So I feel as though, and I wonder if you guys could comment, the cloud has transparent pricing um, and, and, and transparent billing. And so, you know, lock-in is about, okay, if I have a customer and they're trying to move and they're, they're up for a contract renewal or something, or a maintenance, or I'm going to jack their maintenance, but you can't just do that across the board if yeah. you have transparent billing. So there's the, the pricing aspect. There's certainly a lock-in with the processes and procedures that you choose, but no matter what you choose, it, whether it's open source, uh, a cloud provider like Amazon, an on-prem pr provider like the many of the, the, that we know out there, you're going to be locked in to your processes and, and procedures. So it's a matter of degree. I, I personally see it as, a, because of the cloud, a lot less onerous than, than it used to be. Do, do you guys agree with yeah. that? Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, it's, it's that, that application is the, the long pole in the tent from what I, I see. What I've been using, and if I go to something new, if I go build it, this new architecture, cloud neighbor, whatever, that, that, that's a pretty big bet. So, yeah. you know, depending on how deep and tied that is to a specific platform, um, even if I'm choosing a da database, migrating databases aren't easy. Right, so, but that's the uh, issue. It's the bet that you're making. Yeah. Yeah. It's more so than, than the lock-in, because lock-in, you're going to be locked into whatever bet you make. So you got to make the right bet. To me, it's a way for consultants to sort of act like an advocate for the, for the, for the customer. What's more important, in my view, is negotiation strategies, how you place oh. that bet, how you, how you architect your, your cloud strategy. Yeah. And, and I mean, Dave, just yeah, to, to quickly, I remember four years ago, you and I interviewed Brad Anderson with Microsoft, right. and we were poking him on licensing. I, I don't hear that discussion about Microsoft as much. Of course, they always want it cheaper and everything like that, but Microsoft's done a great job. You know, in the cloud communities, they're, they're, they're known as being participating in, in those communities and, and giving customers. Well, that's our take. Yeah. What's your take, Yeah, Carl? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I love it, and I, I think um, what, what I'm seeing is customers are, are hedging their bets, right? So you do, and, and it is a bet. You do have to not go all in with, you know, with somebody, with any cloud provider, but you got to put your chips with, with some proprietary platforms, and what I'm seeing is that multi-cloud that we're all talking about is, is really becoming the reality. Yeah. You know, I, I can think of very few customers that I've worked with who have had Azure as their single public cloud, and, and really that's how they avoid kind of that Z series down the road, right? Where you're locked in, you've got one provider of that platform, uh, you know, they're, they're saying, look, I, I've, you know, I'm going to deploy on the best uh, service in the best public cloud for that application instance, as, uh, as Stu mentioned. Courses that's, for courses, that's happening. as they say in England. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so we're here at Veeam on, your relationship with, with Veeam, um, they've obviously you know, partnered up with you guys yeah. in, a, in a big way. Your thoughts on the partnership? Yeah, love working with these guys. I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that I get to work with some of the best that, that we have, and everything from the relationship that we have at a marketing level, an engineering level, a field level, you know, they're really in, ingrained in, uh, in our ecosystem at all levels. And just a, a very, very easy partner to work with, very uh, responsive to their customer needs, and that's what we look for. You know, we want to work with the partners that customers love. So yeah, I, I'm just thrilled to be part of this relationship. Carl, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. You, I think you embody the new, the new <laughs> open Microsoft and, and you guys are making great progress. Congratulations and thanks so much for thank coming Thank you, on. Dave, it was a pleasure. Right. Stu, thank you very much. Thanks, All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest, Veeam On, live from Chicago. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>